Fx, Mx, Gmx, 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 in this PowerPoint, does it all have to be there? Because my thing is, is that you say a lot, you read a lot. One of the basics of communications of PowerPoint is supposed, you only use a visual aid when you need it to accentuate or further express a point you're trying to make. And if you bombard it with so much on there, first of all, I was lost at the beginning of the PowerPoint. The back, and I read this, but I was lost. There was so much on there and it was so put in there in a way that I literally was overwhelmed. I wanted a copy of the PowerPoint so I could write on it because I literally could not keep track and I used to flow debate. And I just was like, I'm just gonna listen for a minute. I've got this sitting here. I know you need to put it all out there, um, but your section is the longest one and my understanding is that most of the people will have already read this. I thought it was very interesting that you had the largest section here until we got the question and answer period. And then these people were so short and so concise, but you also read from the PowerPoint. I don't need you to read from the PowerPoint. I want you to look at me and talk to me and gesture to it and make points about it. But it seems like it should accentuate your argument. Let me make the argument that this is a time thing. We have two hours. This is as much a tool to us mm -hmm. in that context of we have two hours, we will be handed a case, have to read it and present it as it is for you guys. And I agree with you having it. My thing is making it more user visually friendly. Right, certainly. That's my biggest thing, you know, um, that it be not a tool you rely on, and I want you to use it. It should keep you on track, but you right. shouldn't use it as your book, is my theory. Right. With the other three pathways slide, I will say, um, I mean, it did stand out to me, the one towards the end, there's too much. Lot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a Mac, and whenever I try to do Mac stuff on Windows, it's like, Whoa. So that's just okay. Periphery. All right. Um, yeah, Mike. I wrote a note. You were too long. You, your section is just too I, long. I felt it. Yeah. And you talk too fast. Though. And your tones, matter of fact. I'm gonna throw that out there as well. Um, yeah, you talk way too. I thought a lot of y'all talk way too fast. Personally, is my theory. But your matter of fact, it's great. It's a great talking conversation thing. But I would really want y'all to be professional. You know, in trial and teams and stuff like that, and with public speaking. Everybody should always dress the same. We always had to dress in the same color. So we always wore black suits, white shirts, and the only thing you were allowed to diversify were your ties, accessories, and shoes. That was it. But we all looked like a team walking in selling this product, whether we were selling something or not. We're selling to the jury, we're selling to the judge. Mm -hmm. And my theory is you should all look alike, you should all talk at the same pace, and you shouldn't talk like, well, yeah, you know about the family, you know this, it's like, here is a family. This is, this is their $220 million industry. Yeah, we don't care about the 300 employees, but there's 300 employees involved here. Regardless, we can't lose fact of that. It's how you present, yeah, there's 300 employees, but we're family oriented. You know, it's, we have 300 employees. Our focus is on the family unity because that's the type of industry they run. That's how this business has succeeded and how we're going to continue it. It's that presentation style that delineates that we're having to do this versus we're a company hired to come in here and fix this problem. We're going to do it. You want to hire us. I know this is a competition, not a selling product, but you want to get hired. You want to get the one or the ten, whatever it is they score you on. That's just my kind. That's for all of you. That's not just you, but that's for all of y'all. So in that sense. So you're, part of it is a different, different confidence portrayal. Is that very much, very much? When she's answering the questions, there, you know, whether she knows she knows it or thinks she knows it or just wants to pretend she knows it she sells it a little too forcefully at times but she sells it you i think you've done this so many times that you've lost the newness of it is what i think i think you've lost the newness of it because you're going through the facts your stuff never really changes because it's already been written out for us you know but you doesn't you don't lose the value that it's the first time for whoever you're presented to because that's the time they're going to judge you on it. So yeah, I mean, it's all about that presentation value to me. Does that make sense? Yeah. Oh yeah. I, I think that there's probably a way to balance this. To I, I, there's some folksiness that's okay, right? Mm -hmm. um, that needs to tell the story a little bit, but it, I think it can, it needs somehow needs to tighten up. I don't know how, but you got to get through the basics. 
a little bit faster. I never advocate being monotone, don't get me wrong. I, I, I was over, yeah. over emphasizing that there. And one of the things I thought would be helpful is the approach to it because it helps people remember things and you do things in three and it's like the then, now, and tomorrow. Then was the guy, the father, who set the values. The now is where we're at today and tomorrow is what we're trying to figure out where we're going and that are your three PowerPoints. That's your titles on top of each PowerPoint. The then, the now, and tomorrow. And the same thing with our three options. I feel like your three options should be the same, like um, sit, stay, or go. But something that's catchy like that. So you don't have to read it, but you, you know, it's like we sit here and do what we're doing. You know, we stay and sell it and get out of the business. Or we go and we take over and conquer and divide. And yeah, so and I think they attempted that with parcel them out, keep them together. Hearts. I think they're too long, though. I think yeah. you lose them. I lost the parcel amount by the time we were at the last one. Because that's when I started going, I really forgot. Yeah, Other but, than I knew what yeah. the facts were, but I forgot what your catch was. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I, just technically, the 120 days was super aggressive timeline for me. We're always too aggressive for you. I, you know how long this stuff takes? This is ridiculously long. Not to mention you have to file all the paperwork. Right. To create a council. The, the 120 days is the decision period. Okay. Which well, is, I would say going back to uh, what we talked about in our last meeting as far as like when you make um, assumptions, because in the case it says soon, you know, right. very soon. So I would just refer back to that and say based on, you know, the context and, um, you know, and say that you're assuming a specific time frame, right. if that's what you're basing that decision on. Trying to get it done by the end of the year as opposed to the end of 12 years or whatever. Right, right. Yeah, because I mean, it does say that we know that the company won't survive in medium to long term. So that's not days, that's probably more years. Right. And, so, and so the selling, and who knows, one of the viable options is, yeah, Argus is the one offering today, but who knows, if it comes out that Argus is offering and that the company is actually considering through by developing a family council to sell, shoot, the guy on the other side of the border fringe may be deciding, hey, I'll offer you twice as much to take the company. I didn't realize you were selling. I thought you were so committed to family ownership that I thought I wasn't going to get involved. But hey, let me have a piece of that. You, you could play it up. Uh, you know, the fam you know, the family could say, well, let's start talking around versus just this right. one offer. Yes. I, in, yeah. in many ways, they're not, Ben is not empowered with information. Right. He's, he's now, he's fearful and he's made assumptions about everybody, right? I'm in structural decline, I haven't really talked to, I know what my family will say, do right. you really? Mm -hmm. Right? And um, and he doesn't really know the value of his company. He, he's not armed with information. Word usage is extremely important here. I do think that Ben is not disengaged. I think the fact pattern shows he's very engaged. He's the one that's out there looking at the company being bought. So I want you to really think about changing that word and the utilization of that word. I think he is isolated or, um, I don't want to say scared, but find a word, find a dictionary at the source and I pick another word. I think where we got disengaged was because it said specifically in the case that he was he had other interests that he wanted to pursue. So that's, I think that that's where that spurred from. Maybe it was a poor word choice, but yeah. just to kind of give you a basis of where it came from. And that's what I'm saying. It's a poor word choice because he's not disengaged. So I would be careful about that. The other thing is, and, and this is several places, I, I was concerned with the words talking about the rich kids. We shouldn't be saying they're rich kids. First of all, they're hiring us to come in here and do this. Or, you know, I'm using the idea that you're selling this to be hired, but they are hiring us. You know, there are ways to say that. And the way you go back to that is exactly what's in here, which is the family value initiative uh, from the, uh, the initiating point was that the father wanted them to be financially set. So they're not rich kids. They're just perpetuating the family value, which is financial viability for themselves. That's the same thing as saying you're a snotty little rich kid. Yeah, rich kids resent being called rich kids. Yes. No one wants to be called a trust fund baby, but they're trust fund babies. Okay. Right. But that's what we're saying. That's not what they are, though. What they are is they're perpetuating the family value, which is to take care of our own and set up ourselves for financial viability for the future. Yeah. So it's utilization of certain words. Um, another word that I, I didn't um, like was... Um, Oh, Leslie has a pretty major interest. That was made a comment like she has this larger interest than everybody else. I disagree. At the point that her husband's dead and the only people are there are her children, I don't think she has a larger interest than anyone. It was said during the history section that she had a larger interest, a pretty major interest. I don't think she has a pretty major interest. And later on I talked about someone having more of an interest. 
I don't think that was, I don't think that should be expressed. I, it's not what you meant, but it's what you said, and the way you said it, it sounded like she's more important than the rest of 